Thank you for tuning in to the Blackstone Intelligence Report. I'm Jake Morfonios. There is a centuries-old plan that was created for the benefit of a relatively small number of elites. It's a plan for total world domination. Now, to those who may be new to this topic, an assertion like that probably sounds like conspiracy paranoia. But for those who have spent considerable time researching the claim, reviewing the documents, listening to recordings, considering the opinions of experts, even looking at the credibility of eyewitness testimony and other facts and evidence, there is unfortunately far too much corroborating evidence that this diabolical plan does exist to allow us to just dismiss it out of hand or to simply chalk it up to conspiracy nonsense. And a big reason that we must not dismiss this topic is because the evidence demonstrates that these elites, these predators, are on the verge of finally realizing their goal of domination, complete and total, over the rest of us. I want you to think about it this way. If we go back into history, over the ages, there have been all kinds of forms of systems of order and domination that have existed. These are systems from feudalism to monarchy to democracy, socialism, communism, these various orders of control systems each have served to benefit a small number of people who sit at the top of the power structures, while the overwhelming majority of the people who are subjected to these systems simply serve to produce and to support those that are at the top of the pyramid. If we look at the 1700s, the 1800s, the dominant world order that was in existence at that time was a system of strong, independent nations that went around the rest of the world, there was a handful of them, went around the rest of the world imposing colonialist occupation on weaker nations, subjugating them, using their resources for the good of the primary nation states. And I'm talking about countries like the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Spain, so on. These are examples of this old system. There have been other mechanisms that have been used by elites for achieving domination over other people. And these mechanisms have evolved many times throughout history. Now, they, and, and usually they would span a period of centuries or more before they would evolve into something else. Now, all the way up until World War II, from the 1700s, 1800s, this nationalist order was largely dominated by the men who controlled the British Empire. But following the decline of this British Empire and the rise of the new Anglo-American uh, nexus, this new American Empire following the end of World War II, the elites now had the tool that they needed to begin imposing a new system, a new paradigm to dominate an even larger number of nations and people throughout the world. Okay, this is upping the ante. This is increasing their control. And this new system does not rely on nationalism. Instead, it relies on globalism, a world where national borders have become blurred and individual nation states are melded along with their neighbors into super states, thereby allowing these elites at the top easier control of a larger number of people and a larger amount of resources. This system is designed to lead ultimately toward the goal of a one world government, which of course these elites will control. This new paradigm, this new way of looking at things, this new way of trying to impose global control is called the new world order as opposed to the old world order. The argument for a new world order is basically this. The old world order of independent nation states may have been sufficient for dealing with the needs of the people within the boundaries of those individual nations. However, so the argument goes, we are no longer that kind of world. We have become, because of technological advancement, we have become a global society that is knit tightly together 
So when one group of people anywhere in the world are dealing with some significant problem, because we are a global society now, that problem is no longer just the problem of that individual nation. It's now a problem that faces a larger community, a global community. Think of COVID-19 as an example, started out in China, but hey, it affects the whole world. So we need a bigger system than just the system of China to deal with it. And since an individual national government lacks the power to reach beyond its own borders to solve the problems of other nation states, the old order of relying on individual nations to deal with their own populations, that's just not going to cut it anymore. It's no longer sufficient, right? It takes a village. So a new order of governance is necessary to balance out power, reducing the power and control of individual countries taking that power of the individual nations and redistributing the power to a small number of super states, such as the European Union. Putting the power over large swaths of people over and the countries in which they reside, putting that power into the hands of a supranational group is therefore, according to this theory, a better more righteous and necessary way of dealing with problems for the benefit of a larger group of people, a global society. Now, that's the rosy version of the concept in a nutshell, the concept of a new political order in the world, a new world order. But these elites have, over a period of many decades, gradually built up subsystems to facilitate the progress toward this one world supremacy. With these subsystems, the New World Order elites have been able to successfully rule from the shadows while using puppets to go out as the public face and do their bidding for them in places such as the halls of Congress or parliaments around the world. They control large populations of people and they control the people's resources. How? By controlling the small number of politicians and leaders in any particular nation. These leaders and politicians control the people by keeping them in a state of fear. There's always some boogeyman out there that you have to give your power over to the government to protect you from. But it's not simply the political class that's carrying out this new world order agenda. You've got multinational corporations. You've got the bankers who invest in those corporations. There are agents of dirty intelligence networks. There are agents who are embedded in media outlets who manipulate the news that the people rely on for truth. So you keep the people in a state of abject darkness trying to feel their way around in the fog and confusion of di these disreputable and dishonest stories that come out of the media. There are corrupt agents in national militaries who are all too willing to either go out and wage wars or to simply request more and more government funding for new armaments, new weapons programs that will ultimately be used in the service of these global elites as they seek to expand their control into other nations. And of course, the sinister agenda of the elites is shined up and presented in a reputable manner by elite think tanks. Think tanks such as the Council on Foreign Relations or the Trilateral Commission. And each year, new blood is brought into this scheme by the recruitment arm of the New World Order. And that recruitment arm is the Bilderberg Group. And so you have an international network of witting and unwitting co-conspirators, each one scratching the other's backs for mutual gain and these people around the world that are recruited into the system are used by these predatory elites to help bring about their primary goal. Unfortunately, this evil is so diabolical, it's so cunning and it's so brazen 
that it's beyond the suspicion or the comprehension of the vast majority of the population. They're neither uh, aware or concerned with the fact that modern secret societies that are operating in this system came from earlier secret societies. They are blissfully unaware of how they have been turned into debt slaves by central bankers. They're unaware that the men who are being presented to them every four years as options for U.S. president are nothing more than tools in the hands of the elites and their agenda. The wickedness and the ruthlessness of these, oh, I hate to sound melodramatic, but these villains is so cruel, it is so staggering that the average person's mind simply cannot recognize the evil that is standing right before it. It doesn't matter that with just a few clicks uh, of, of the mouse that anybody can learn that right now, millions of people are being killed in wars and conflicts every single year, facilitated by these evil men. The average person just tunes all of that out because they have been so caught up in the trap of mindless entertainment. They are so busy trying to keep up with the Joneses and purchase whatever the next Apple product is, or they're so, they have to catch up on the latest Netflix series and binge watch it so they can have a conversation with their you know, co-workers at the water cooler. They just don't have the time or the interest in the affairs of the world outside of that comfortable little bubble, which is exactly how the elites want it. And equally unfortunate is that there are those who revel in their belief that they are among the few people who have been red pilled and are awake to the sinister plot of these evil people. They talk about the deep state, and the deep state certainly does exist, but these people have been conditioned to blindly follow the agents of the deep state itself, and they look the other way, or they justify the vile activities of some of these deep state agents while patting themselves on their backs, calling themselves patriots and defenders of the U.S. Constitution. For example, it's breaking news as of just a few minutes ago that even after the fourth time that President Trump announced that he was withdrawing troops from Syria, as it turns out, he has sent increased numbers of troops into Syria to confront Russia. There are no tools who are as useful to these predatory elites as those people who think that they are woke, but who are actually in the grips of partisan mindsets that prevents them from seeing the truth that really exists around them. They've been conquered because they have allowed themselves to be divided by a culture war, a well-orchestrated psyop that they don't even know that they have fallen for. For many of them, there's simply no way to wake them up. They are simply too satisfied. They are too proud. They have found an emotional home among like-minded people who have also fallen for psyops, such as QAnon, a psyop that has weaponized people who ought to know better and turn them against the rest of us who can see the plot and see what the PSYOP is doing to America. QAnon is and always has been a complete, utter, total fraud. QAnon is a movement controlled from the shadows by intelligence operatives who are intent on keeping Donald Trump in office, primarily for the purpose of pushing America toward war with the primary enemy of Israel and Saudi Arabia. That enemy is Iran. The overthrow of Iran would unleash the beasts of the New World Order to go into that region of the world and brutalize several independent nations in the region that have been kept propped up through the support of Iran and its proxies.
There are very few nations left in the world that have the strength to stand up and oppose the expansion of the New World Order system of subjugation and control. And Iran is one of them. Over the course of this week, what I'm going to do is share a series of short videos that highlight the main points of various parts of this New World Order system, such as the U.S. Federal Reserve and the banking class, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderberg Group, the Central Intelligence Agency, the Military Industrial Complex, and so forth. Let me know down in the comments section which topics related to this subject that you would most like to see me cover. And I hope that those of you who support my reporting will do so with a donation of $5 at either patreon.com slash endtimesnewsreport or at paypal.me slash endtimesnewsreport. Thank you all for watching. For Blackstone Intelligence, I'm Jake Morfonios.